Hello guys. My name is Rada, and I will be your teacher for the software design pattern in Python. Before we start, I want to show you what you will learn in today's video. We will answer today on the following questions. What is the design patterns? Why is it important for a software developer to learn the design patterns? What are the three categories of the design patterns? So, let us start. For a long time, the software developers have faced many problems during the development of softwares, which slow down the development process. There is a lot of bugs in the program. I don't understand your code and it is hard to reuse it. The program has become too big and it's hard to maintain. And because they faced problems in the software design over and over again, they have found working solutions for each one of those problems. The program is working great, and we have only few bugs in it. The code is clean, understandable, and I can reuse it easily. Good job guys, we will release the software in time. One day, four experienced software developers, called the Gang of Four, decide to put all their experience and knowledge about software design. In a book, they called it Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. So, the design pattern are clean, optimized, repeatable, not language-specific, and proven solutions, made by experienced software developers, to solve commonly occurring problems in software design, which will not become visible until later in the implementation process. Now, let's talk about the categories of the design patterns. There is three categories, each one of them deals with a type of problem in the object-oriented programming. The first category is the creational design patterns. This category deals with object creation mechanisms, trying to make the code flexible and reusable. For example, we want to create a class, to instantiate person objects. The class has two attributes, the name, and the age of the object. We create with a class this object. Let's call it Jack, he is 30 years old. Jack has a job, so the class will also include which job he has, and maybe his salary. Later, Jack bought a house, and a car, so the class will include the type of his car, and her color, and the address of his house. After that, Jack found the love of his life. So he got married, and become a father of a beautiful girl, so the class should also include the name of his wife, and his daughter. So, can you think of a good way, to expand the class, with all the different new events happening in Jack's life, without making the class too complex, and make it reusable? Reusable, how, we can use the same class to create another different object. For example Adam, who is still a student, single, has no car, has a dog, and still live with his parents. So, if you want to create such an object in the cleanest way possible, I suggest you to learn the creational design pattern, which solve many problems, in the creation of objects. The second category is, the structural design patterns. It deals with how classes, and objects, can be put together, to form larger structures. Working with multiples class, and multiple objects, of different types, is not always an easy task. Sometimes they just don't fit. That's why we use, the structural design patterns, which assembles multiple classes, into bigger working structures. Let's just take a simple example to understand more. In a game console, you have a class, which create a player object. This class has three methods, one makes the player move to the left, when you click directional button left, the second, makes the player move to the right, when you click directional button right, and the third, makes the player shoot with a gun, when you click the X button. Now, we want to make from this console game, a mobile game. So we want to use the same class, that create the player in the console game in our mobile game, because it will take too much time to create a new player class from scratch, but we must take in consideration that the player must move left, when we swipe left, and must move right, when we swipe right, and must shoot, when we click on the screen. So, to combine classes, to make bigger structures, in clean, flexible, and reusable way, you have to learn, the structural design patterns. The third category, is the behavioral design pattern, which deals with how the objects and classes, communicate with each other. Because the number of classes, and objects, become very high, during the development process, the communication between those classes, and objects become too complex to handle, 
which lead to bugs in the software. To explain this, let's take the example of an airport. If we imagine that there is no object, control tower, in the airport to manage the landing of airplanes, and we had many objects airplane. If one of those objects airplanes want to land, he must communicate with all the other objects airplanes in the sky to tell them that he will land, so they let the landing strip free for him. That can be very difficult because there is a lot of objects airplanes, and he may forget to communicate with all of them which can lead to serious problems. So, the role of the object, control tower, is very important. The object airplane must only communicate with this object, and this object, will communicate with all the other objects airplane concerned, so they can let the landing strip free. The behavioral design patterns, is like the control tower, it makes the communication between objects reliable and less complex. So, you can see now, how much the design patterns is important for a software developer. Maybe you are saying, I already know how to solve those problems, which you talked about earlier, without using the design patterns. Maybe, you are right, but are you sure, that your solutions will work all the time, did you face all kind of problem in the software design, to prove that your solutions, are reliable, like the design pattern solutions, which are proven to be reliable from very experienced software developers. Learning design patterns will also give you a new angle of view, on how to write a better code. If you liked my way of teaching, please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you, in the next video. Thank you for watching.